हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्लानर मशीन एंड अनदर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्लानर मशीन्स अवेलेबल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स अवेलेबल इन द प्लानर मशीन एंड हाउ दिस प्लानर मशीन वर्क्स सो टू अंडरस्टैंड दी वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ दिस प्लानर मशीन लेट अस हैव अ लुक एट दिस सिंपल फिगर ऑफ दिस प्लानर मशीन now as you can see we have discussed the same parts available in the case of the saper machine also most of the parts are similar to that but the movement provided to the tool and the table that is the different so over here the first part that is the bed similarly over here this is the second part which is called as the table and over this table workpiece is set workpiece is set over this table the part which helps to hold the tool and that part is called as the tool head so this is the tool head now similarly the next part which helps to hold the tool head and which maintain the movement of the tool head in this horizontal or axial direction that part is called as the cross rail so that is the fourth part that is the cross rail now to obtain the movement of the tool in vertical direction this entire cross rail needs to be moved in upward and downward direction and for that movement the next part provided that is the column so this fifth part is called as the column and which helps to obtain the vertical or up and down movement of the tool in this planner machine and at the top portion transmission system is provided transmission system which helps to obtain the table and tool movement and as in this case you can see that this pulley arrangement is provided to obtain the transmission movement so now we have seen the major parts available in the case of the planner machine so to understand the working principle of this planner machine just simply first understand which is the primary motion in the primary motion in the case of planner machine that is the reciprocating movement of this table and so the first workpiece is set over here then the tool is set in this tool head and now suppose if this is the workpiece and this tool is set over here and this entire workpiece reciprocates and the reciprocation of which against this tool helps to remove the material from this workpiece and this planner machine are used when the shape and size of the workpiece is comparatively larger which cannot be accommodated in the case of this saper machine in the case of saper machine smaller shape and size workpiece can be handled very easily whereas in the case of this planner machine if the shape and size of the workpiece is very large which are difficult to held in the case of saper machine then this planner machine is used and there are many different types of planner machines are available which are used based on the shape and size of the workpiece that means if the length of the workpiece is very large at that time different types of planner machine is used similarly if the height of the planner machine is very used at that time another planner machine is used similarly if one want to machine multiple surfaces of the workpiece at that time also another type of planner machine can be used so the based on requirement and based on the finishing requirement on different surfaces different types of planner machines are used so there are many number of planner machines are available from which we will study various planner machine and the first one that is the double housing or standard planner machine and for that 
simply let's have a look at the simple 2d figure of this standard planner machine and as you can see most of the parts are common as that of the planner machine that we have discussed as you can see it has table bed column cross rail tool head but in this case there is one vertical tool head and another two side tool head are provided so this is the first tool holder this is second and this is the third so there are three different tool holders are provided and based on that at three different location machining can be obtained and other than these four vertical movement column is also provided which we have discussed so these are the common basic parts that are available in our planner machine so now what is the advantage of this standard planner machine now suppose if the workpiece is available over here and on this workpiece if one want to machine the top surface also and two side surface also then to obtain this type of finishing or machining operation on multiple surfaces the standard planner machine is helpful now this table reciprocates perpendicular to this plane and this reciprocating movement of this table helps to obtain the machining operation on these two side surfaces and one top surface of this workpiece so when multiple surfaces to be machined at that time this double housing or standard planner machine is used now another that is the open side planner machine let us have a look at the figure of this open side planner machine now as one can see one side of this planner machine is open this particular side is open on this machine and that's why it is called as the open side planner machine so now when this planner machine is helpful similarly in this all similar parts are available as that of available in normal planner machine but here three two heads are available two vertical and one side so now when the length of the workpiece or you can see if the workpiece length is very large which is difficult to hold in the case of the double slide planner machine at that time this open side planner machine is used so this open side planner machine is used when the length of the workpiece it needs to be accommodated very easily other than this the machining operation is easy table reciprocates with this table workpiece is also reciprocate and the material removal takes place with the help of this two heads provided on the cross rails so this is the basic explanation for the case of the open side planner machine next that is the pit planner machine now as we have discussed to machine the multiple surfaces to machine if the length of the workpiece is very high or very long and now if the height of the workpiece is very high and it is difficult to accommodate in previous machine at that time this pit planner machine is available and as one can see there is certain depth is provided for the table and the base or we can see the pit is provided and that's why this machine is called as the pit planner machine and as you can see base is provided table is provided and the work is accommodated over here and if the height of the workpiece is very high and this can also be accommodated very easily in the case of the pit planner machine so this pit planner machine is helpful when the height of the workpiece is very high and which is difficult to operate in the previous machines other than this two tool heads are available and the further machining process can be obtained by similar working principles that we have discussed in our previous topic so this is the basic 2d figure of this pit planner machine now we will discuss about planner machine operations so to understand different planner machine operation that means 
if one want to clay or one want to machine horizontal surface maybe one want to machine vertical surface or if one want to machine angular surfaces then how to operate these different planner machines so the first case that is the planning the horizontal surfaces and how these horizontal surfaces can be obtained so to understand this just take a simple example suppose if this is the work piece and the tool is provided over here now to machine these horizontal surface simply this work piece is given movement in the horizontal direction or this work piece is given reciprocating movement by using the particular mechanism and when this work piece moves in forward direction the material is removed in the form of the chips so the material is removed over here in the form of the chips and now when this work piece comes back at that time as the clearance angle is provided to the tool no material removal takes place and just simply it rubs against the surface and as the clapper box mechanism is provided so there is no effect of tool on the work piece so this is how simply these horizontal surfaces can be planned using this planner machine so again let's have a look over here if one want to machine this horizontal surface so with the help of this planner table this work piece is given horizontal movement or horizontal reciprocating movement and as this tool is set perpendicular to this work piece during forward stroke it removes the material and during return stroke it just simply rubs against the surface and this is how this horizontal surface can be machined now the another case that is the planning of the vertical surfaces and planning of vertical surfaces that is important to understand in the case of the planner machine now let's take an example by using this simple figure now if one want to machine this vertical surface using the planning machine then how this operation can be performed so as we know this table can be moved in the horizontal direction by using particular mechanism but this table cannot be moved in vertical direction so to machine this particular surface is what need to be done suppose if we want to machine 3 mm depth so now simple first movement that is this work piece is given reciprocating movement with the help of the table and this tool is fed against the work piece by 1 mm and the machining operation is performed now further after completing one machining operation this tool is given again 1 mm feed movement and further the horizontal finishing operation is performed so that means step by step first 1 mm depth, depth is obtained then second mm depth is obtained and then third mm depth is obtained so by feeding tool in vertical direction by certain mm this vertical surfaces or vertical machining operation can be obtained in the case of the planner machine so this tool is fed step by step against the work piece and this table is given reciprocating movement as available in the planner machine so this is how the planning of vertical surfaces is carried out in the case of the planner machine the next movement or the next machining operation that is the planning angular surfaces and these angular surfaces is obtained by just simply using the swiveling head this swiveling head is used to provide certain angle to the tool 
and by providing that certain angle after that the machining operation or the steps to be followed are similar means this table if this is the workpiece and below the workpiece table is provided so this workpiece is given reciprocating moment as we have discussed and as the angular position is provided from the starting to the tool so this angle or these angular surfaces are obtained by using this simple mechanism so the tool movement or the tool position is at certain angle which is required to produce these angular surfaces means in the case of the horizontal surface the tool is perpendicular to the workpiece similarly in the case of the vertical surfaces machining the tool is perpendicular to the workpiece but in the case of these angular surfaces or angular machining operation tool is given certain angular movement based on the requirement and other steps to be followed in the case of these angular surfaces finishes are similar to the to that of horizontal and vertical finishing operations so this is how these angular surfaces is obtained by just simply using swelling head provided over here so that part is called as the swelling head now the next another machining or the finishing operation can also be obtained using this planner machine that is the planning of the formed surfaces and to plan that formed surfaces the tool is given movement in the form that is required that means if the form required is like this then this tool is given the movement in this similar shape that is required and the movement of the tool and workpiece is similar as we have discussed in our previous cases also and the next machining operation that is the machining operation with which splines can be obtained in the case of the workpiece also so to obtain the splines simply a cutting rack or spline operation is performed in the case of the planner machine but for our exam also the three main important movement that is important that is first one is the machining horizontal surfaces machining vertical surfaces and machining angular surfaces and the machining in the case of the planner machine and in the case of the shaper machine both are similar means the planner machine operation are similar to that of the shaper machine operation but the difference is that in the case of the planner machine workpiece or table is given reciprocating movement whereas in the case of the shaper machine tool is given reciprocating movement other steps or other methodology is similar in the case of the shaper machine or the planner machine so i hope it is clear to you that how these different operations are performed in the case of the shaper machine or planner machine so looking forward to see you all in our next lecture up to then thank you